Let's complete an energy transfer problem. You are enjoying your favorite weekend activity, searching for lost treasure with your metal detector, when you discover a 17.4 gram metal ring. You heat the ring to 100 degrees C in a hot water bath. Then place the ring into a 38.0 gram sample of water that is 25.0 degrees C. The final temperature of this system is 28 degrees C. What is the specific heat capacity of the metal and what is the metal's identity? Now it seems like there's a lot going on in this problem, but let, let's break it down here. So you discover a 17.4 gram ring. You then heat that ring to 100 degrees C in a hot water bath. So what you do is you take the ring and you place it in boiling water. When you take the ring out of the water, the ring is now 100 degrees because it was bathing in that hot water. Then you place the ring into 38 grams of cold water. It's at about 25 degrees C. That's room temperature. Now, if the ring is 100 degrees C, that's hot, and you place it in cold water, you know that the ring is going to give up heat to the water. So the final temperature of the water and the ring will be 28 degrees C. So let's go through that one more time. You find a ring, you place the ring in boiling water. When you pull the ring out of the boiling water, the ring is 100 degrees C. Then you place that ring into a different sample of water, a 38 gram sample of water, that's at 25 degrees C. As the ring gives off its heat into the water, the ring cools down and the water warms up. And then at equilibrium, the temperature of the ring and the water is 28.0 degrees C. So what is the specific heat capacity of the metal and what is the metal's identity? So we know that the metal ring is going to give up energy and that the water is going to accept the energy. However much energy the water receives, well, that's exactly how much was given off by the ring. So for Q, let's plug in MC delta T. This will be for the metal. And then for this Q, let's use MC delta T, and this will be for the water. So everything that gets plugged in here pertains to the metal, and everything that gets plugged in over here pertains to the water. Okay, the ring has a mass of 17.4 grams. What they're asking for in the problem is what's the specific heat capacity of the ring? So that's C and temperature final minus temperature initial. We know that the ring's temperature started at 100 degrees C. And then when we placed it into the cooler water, it reached the final temperature of 28 degrees C. So this is the mass of the ring. This is the specific heat capacity of the ring. And this is the temperature change experienced by the ring. It went from 100 degrees to 28 degrees. Remember, the ring was placed into the calorimeter that had the cool water in it. So everything on the right hand side, that will be for the water. They tell us that the mass of water was 38 grams. The specific heat capacity of the water, well you looked that up in your table and it's 4.184 joules per gram degrees C. And this is the temperature change of the water. Remember it's final minus initial. The water in the calorimeter, or the cool water that you place the ring into, remember that started at 25 degrees C. And then after the ring gave up its energy, then the water ended at 28 degrees C. So the final temperature is 28, and the initial temperature is 25. So we're going to be solving for C. This will be the specific heat capacity of the ring. When we solve for C, we get 0 0.38 joules per gram degrees C. Now if you look up this value in your chart, you'll find that the ring 
was made out of copper. It's disappointing. You were probably hoping that the ring would be made out of gold, but it's not. It was just copper. So once again, here's what's happening. We find a ring, we heat that ring up hot to 100 degrees. Then we transfer that ring, which is 100 degrees, into some cool water that's inside of an insulated cup or a calorimeter. So essentially we have a hot ring placed into cool water. The hot ring gives off energy into the cool water and at the end they reach a temperature of 28 degrees C, both the ring and the water. So the only thing we're doing with this hot water bath here in the beginning, the only purpose of that is to heat up the ring to 100 degrees C. After the ring has been has been heated to 100 degrees C, we don't do anything with that hot water bath anymore. The only purpose of that hot water bath is to get the ring up to 100 degrees C so then we can transfer it in to the calorimeter. So all problems are done pretty much just like this.